There are various reasons why people choose to buy an electric vehicle. In this video, let's just talk about how fun they are. And you know who's having fun with EVs? Jason's having fun. Uh, this is my 2001 Kawasaki Lakota that I had since I was a kid. And uh, we just recently converted it to electric drivetrain. So it's lithium ion battery power with uh, an electric motor, uh, direct chain drive. So uh, pretty, pretty close to the original experience, except silent and uh, more powerful and a lot better acceleration. It's a QS Motors QS138 V3 with uh, internal gear reduction. Uh, it's about a 1.25 to one gear reduction. It allows us to keep a factory rear sprocket. Um, runs at 76 volt with a 24 amp hour battery. So 76 volt nominal, which means about 88 volt peak. And yeah, it'll do about 35 miles an hour on the top end, but I mostly go tighter off-road stuff, so we don't really need a lot of speed. And it's great for tight trails, rock climbing, mud, things like that. It's just an absolute blast. So it has an external charger, plugs right into your normal 120 volt outlet. Uh, it'll recharge this in just over an hour from dead. So it's about, about an hour and a half from zero. Uh, so we'll go out riding in the morning, come back, plug it in, have lunch. And by the time we're done with lunch, it's ready to ride again. So this is still technically a prototype. I just have it held in there with a, with a yep. essentially a ratchet strap. But I mean, long term goal on any of the ones that we're going to convert are going to be having swappable batteries like that, uh, possibly even different sizes. So if you want to have a small battery for a small piece of property, you can you know just spend a little bit on battery. Or if you do want to go out and do hours of trail riding, you can put in a four or five. Or I mean, you can see there's tons of space for a, a bigger battery. So uh, you can you know you could go nuts and have a huge battery and ride for hours if you want. We just went to Drummond Island. We did we were able to do about 11 miles on a charge on Drummond Island. And if you've ever been to Drummond, it's like pretty intense, serious off road. Uh, we were doing all the two tracks, so a lot of rock climbing, a lot of mud holes. Um, I mean, we averaged about seven miles an hour. So it's you know you're you're crawling for a lot of it. It's not it's not very fast at all. And uh, that was our first real test, apart from just riding around in you know yards and smaller pieces of property. And I was blown away with how good it well how well it went. So. Uh, decided to try and get some other people involved because we just want to share the fun. I got into Tesla shortly after they had started. Uh, I actually remember a guy when I first saw it, he was talking about running the fourth mile in his Tesla and I've always been into drag racing. When I realized he was saying fourth mile instead of quarter mile, I was like, all right, this is, this is clearly opening up a whole new market. And I uh, realized how fast they were and that was the one thing keeping me back from getting into electric vehicles, really, because you know, I never cared about the Prius or anything like that. It was like, they're just, they're not interesting. They're not fast. And uh, once Tesla came out with the Model S, that was actually quick. I started realizing the potential there that, hey, these don't have to be boring. And uh, first got in electric vehicles like that. And then I had, like I said, I've had this since new. It was sitting in, a, in my, uh, under my dad's deck for a while. Then it was sitting in my barn. And I finally started to realize, hey, there's, you know, they're starting to get these motors out there, starting to have more controllers available. The parts started to come available to actually build an electric four wheeler that I don't know how long I've been thinking about it for, but uh, you know, the opportunity arose. So I finally pulled the trigger, bought the parts and the actual conversion itself didn't take long. And, well, I mean, once we wrote it, we just fell in love and uh, yeah. So this was more. essentially a dead off-road vehicle and you put life back into it. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> it hadn't run for years, just out of, out of disuse, you know, it was just all the maintenance and everything, getting tired of the oil changes, it sat for a long time. So every time we'd use it, we'd either, if we didn't put stabilizer in it, we'd have to clean out the fuel system and everything. And now with the battery in there, you know, you leave it for six months, plug it back in and, and you're good to go. There's just, you know, no maintenance, no upkeep. Uh, so this thing is absolutely, we use it nearly daily now. I'm using it for chores in the yard, uh, just having fun in the yard with the kids and everything. And I mean, my, my daughter, my four-year-old, won't ride on a gas four-wheeler where she hates the noise, it terrifies her. Uh -huh. And now she loves these. So, I mean, the kids love that there's no noise. It's just all around beneficial, I'd say, you know. And you mentioned the Tesla Model Y. I saw that coming in yeah. and I, I was like, oh, I got to find out who's driving that. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. What, what do you do with the, uh, and uh, I'll get some videos of that. Yeah, so it's a Model Y performance. Uh, we've got uh, 18 inch uh, BF Goodrich all-terrain KO2s on there uh, with 1552 uh, chicane wheels, I think five spokes. And other than that, it's stock. I put skid plates on it and we've taken that off road stock height. We took that up to Drummond Island and did uh, Fossil Ledges and Glencove Beach via the ORV route, obviously not two track, but the ORV route. And uh, it was pretty gnarly. That's the most serious stuff we've been in with Tesla. And I mean, water crossings filled with wet rocks and going slow with off-road assist. And I didn't even notice any wheel slip. Very low clearance. So we got some sideways looks from some Jeeps and trucks and stuff. But like I said, we weren't as fast as them, but like I say, we weren't the fastest thing on the trail, but I'm pretty sure we were the fastest thing on the trail because I don't think you're gonna see anything else that's that quick out there right, doing right. those kind of trails. So no, that's awesome. it, was a, it was a blast. If you'd like more information about this conversion, visit raygenmotorsports.com. The website is new, so more details will be coming. 
Volt Eaters is the club looking for enthusiasts of electric off-roaders. Also a website, both are on Instagram too. Thanks Jason for sharing this information about your electric off-roaders. The future is going to be fun, people. We just need creative minds to figure a few things out.